balance, it's a search for balance. A search for balance from the body, for the physical system. Yeah. So if you get a, um, a trigger, we call that stress. So the, like the collective name of all the triggers that come into the body. It can be mentally, it can be physically. Yeah, we call them stress yeah, from now on. So if I hit you or somebody gets into cold water, that's a stress for the body. And it causes a disbalance. Yeah? And your body wants to get back into balance. So there is a physical reaction, mentally and physically. Yeah? So the body got different ways to cope with that stress. <coughs> I point them out here. Physical stress, mental stress, and especially uh, psycho uh, emotional stress is yes, one of the things we have to cope in a daily basis. <coughs> the other one as well, but this in this environment, in the office environment, yeah, is a big thing on the moment with the whole health branch, yeah, because a lot of people cope with what Rich is talking about before. It's like uh, I'm not, I'm not feeling well because something wrong. Yeah. <coughs> and I think that all comes down with uh, the way we cope with the stresses. Yeah. <coughs> if you get a a really really big hit by stress, <coughs> yeah, your body can go into the fight, fright, or flight response. That's what we're just talking about on the basic, the basic uh, survival course. Yeah, when you get a lot of stress, you get in that reaction. What do we do? Drink a cup of tea. Yeah. Because it brings you back to getting control. And that's what I want to talk about because stress is actually very beneficial, not only mentally but also physically. Yeah, we can utilize stress to get better. Basically that's what the whole homeostasis is about. Yeah? You get stress in, you get out of balance, and your body wants to get back into balance. So it causes a whole avalanche of reactions in the body to get better, to cope with that stress if it comes again. Basically where the whole thing of training Training athlete, athletes or just training in the gym is built on is built on that getting back or even better than you were before. Okay. Are there any questions about that part? One thing to realize is is if you go that far, so we're talking about the tipping point. You just basically see it as a as a line. This is your balance. <coughs> you get a stress in, yeah, and it causes this balance. So you get down the line. With your body you're reacting with all kinds of things. What here is happening at this point is usually this, especially if it's a big threat for the body. <coughs> um, the first response of the body is always uh, with um, hormones because it's the most part is actually the second. The first one is uh, neurological. Yeah, that's the quickest. Then you have the hormonal response, yeah, and then you, the body gonna adapt. So basically, this whole part is neurological and hormonal. It's good to understand that woman. Uh, tend to um, react different on stress, and that's because oxytocin. I don't know if that's the right word in English. Yeah. Uh, they react different because it tends to not really doing that, but going um, tend and befriend. I think um, it causes that the reaction of the, the uh, usually the woman reactions more. They get more into um, emotional okay. and that's very beneficial for women on their part 
because of the pregnancy and because of which you're talking about uh, level, yeah, getting, uh, how do you call it, labor. Yeah. So that's why they think that women live longer than men yeah. because they cope different with all kinds of stress. Uh, just a, just a, it's not really useful for us, but it's just a thing. Just don't say that in the workplace, that'll get you fired <laughs> straight away. Um, so we talked about a tipping point, yeah? You can, we call that, this point is your normal balance, yeah? You get hit or you get some kind of stress in, the body just get less capable and then it starts to react and then it starts to go up again. If that stress is just big enough, yeah, or just once, it gets back to this line. If it's not big enough, it's just a small threat, there's actually not much happening there. If it comes back regularly, on a regular basis, and it's short term, yeah, like, I think the most common example is just for training, but I can get the other example in. If an astronaut is going to outer space, yeah, <clears throat> one of the biggest concerns of an astronaut is staying fit, but not in terms of staying fit in having his cardio respiratory whole thing going, but more the bone structure. Why is that happening? Uh, they have less bone structure when they come back. Why is that happening? Because they don't have the stress of gravity. Yeah. What we have here is constantly stressing on the body to keep that, that whole thing strong. Yeah. So this, I think that's a basic concept you have to realize. And it ties in with the whole thing of getting back into nature. Yeah. Because the way we live on this moment, we try to go to that ease. And it's a natural thing, it's very natural, because we want to work efficiently. Yeah, we want to work with as less energy as possible. That's, that's what the, that whole thing is about. Yeah? The body wants to react really efficiently. So we want to be as easy as possible. Just sit down on the desk instead of standing. But that's where the tipping point comes in in a different way, because we're getting that easy at work and at different times in the whole daily life that we get weak. Yeah. And I think that's where the whole thing of this revolving force kicks in. Also for the people that are already doing a lot of survival stuff in terms of uh, doing fire lighting, uh, using that knife, yeah but not really are uh, mentally and physically fit. Do I understand that? Yeah. Where I want to go to? So, another, exa another explanation of the tipping point is if you go too far, it causes damage. If you're doing too much, it causes damage. Yeah. Um, a really, really, really good, I think I go too far now, but um, <coughs> it causes damage, yeah? That's the gold concept. If we do just enough, you get better. If you do too much, you get damaged. Yeah, that's the whole way of approaching training, but not only training, but just keep up with the flow in being outdoors. Yeah. Um, it's maybe a good thing tell now is do you guys know about the blue zones? Yeah, yeah. What is a blue zone? Oh, the two clusters
which typically involve like some form of like farming production. Um, sense of community uh, and purpose. Like, um, I can't remember the last one, but yeah. Yeah, oh, uh, it's a whole holistic system of doing things. Um, a lot of gurus out there, they tend to pick one thing and say, all right, they have a Mediterranean diet, so they get 100, 113 years old. It's not, not working like that. Yeah? Um, in the last couple of years, I grow a lot with this kind of thing. But because I had a few good teachers, and I realized that the concept is not, is not logic. You cannot pick one thing and get better. You cannot pick one supplement and get really strong. Yeah? It needs to tie in with each other. Yeah? And that's the way it works in the blue zones. The blue zone, uh, basically they're called blue zones because somebody did research on them, had a blue marker and just point them out on a map. That's why they're called blue zones. Yeah? Um, <clears throat> but all the people that live in there, they all have different kind of diet, they have different kind of lifestyle. But the thing they have in common, they have a very active lifestyle. And they're not having a lifestyle as like lifting heavy things, uh, go as fast as possible. No, they have an active lifestyle in terms of working on getting food. Yeah. Most of them have a farm. Most of them have a, just a outdoor things to do. Yeah, they live outdoors. They have a lot of sunlight, vitamin D3. Uh, uh, yeah. um, they got a lot of things in, in different angles, social stuff, all kinds tie, tie in. But one of the most important ones is they move and they use their body. And they use their body in such a way that they have to think with the mind to get that, mo that movement going. Yeah? They move like naturally. That's what which was talking about. An example for that, yeah? they move because it it has to be done. It's just work that has to be done. So they constantly have a physical stress. Yeah. It's just big enough to keep them on a certain point, yeah, to keep that balance point good and steady and strong. Yeah, and it's not too much, so they get damaged. Do you see where guys want to go? Yeah. So if you want to go outdoors and you want to be at ease, you have to be, you have to, to have a certain kind of training. I call it training. It's actually not training, it's just be able, be capable for doing that, that kind of thing. Okay? An animal is not training. An animal is just doing the things he does out in the wild, but he, Definitely, he has stress <laughs> every day. Yeah. So, stress is not a bad thing. You think stress is a bad thing. It's not about that. Yeah. It's just about using stress. Because we are smart, we can use it. Yeah. The whole thing about the first mental part of the uh, survival, the basic survival, is about managing stress. Yeah. So, we don't want to have less of stress, per se, we just want to manage it. 